Hello and welcome to My Mom's Basement presented by 3G and Barstool Sports and another Andor recap of My Mom's Basement. It is the penultimate episode of Andor, Andor episode 11. And I got to tell you, Clem, thank God the rebellion is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away because this show would make me enlist. <laughs> yeah, the rebellion is getting real. And I feel like the uh, word of mouth is spreading just like the rebellion here on the internet. You're seeing it. You're seeing people get into it. Our boy Large, I saw, you know, Andor is good. Everyone's, and again, Fight said he's getting into it. The word of mouth is spreading, baby. And the basement boys were in on the basement level, I guess. So, very. <laughs> I know. We should be getting a call from Luthan soon, like a thank you, basically, because we were telling everyone from episode one what did you sacrifice i sacrificed an episode i sacrificed years of my life or days of my life watching book of boba fett and <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, I, I sacrificed sleep from waking <laughs> up at three in the morning to watch new episodes <laughs> but here we are penultimate episode not a thrones penultimate level right we're not no. getting payoffs and stuff this like is that very much yeah that they're they're building up for the finale clearly yeah and I, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but we'll just say it now in, instead of at the end of the review. I st- I feel like we're going to have some resolution, but nowhere near the resolution that a typical show would. I think they were know they were getting multiple seasons. They know that Rogue One is kind of the end point for this character. So it's like, I think there's going to still be a lot of stuff up in the air by the time it's all said and done. And this episode kind of reinforced that, that we still, like, it's not even like, all right, before the prison break before um aldani we're like all right next episode we're getting some crazy stuff going down here i feel like the finale is going to have some stuff but i do feel like there's going to be a lot of stuff still unresolved the funeral is going to be obviously the centerpiece of everything it's the funeral and then the raid on spellhouse whether it happens or not right because we're kind of building up to that as well with anto krieger we kind of saw a hologram of him this week he looked a little bit like i don't know like uh Hakeem the African Dream from WWF. What a callback, Bob Fox. <laughs> Anyone, Hakeem the Dream from WWF, not Hakeem Olajuwon. Look that up back in the day. That was an unbelievable pull, man. I loved Hakeem. He had, uh, I think I had his little wrestling action figure. He was an all time character. He yeah, like, he's put a white him down guy. The, the African Dream, by the way, for, for those who don't know him. A white guy, a fat white guy. A fat white. WWF in the 90s, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yokozuna, world. you know, their Japanese sumo wrestler, he's a Hawaiian guy. So <laughs> Samoan. I uh, wasn't he Samoan? Yeah, he was part of that family, yeah. <laughs> but it was just completely a different world back in the 90s. Pretty crazy. Yep, yep. So, and like you said, we were talking about before we went live about uh, how we're going to recap it. And it's actually kind of easy because it does feel like everything's starting to connect now, which yep. these shows you see it with like a Thrones or something where it's like this character who is just doing his thing over here. All of a sudden he does a couple things, meets someone in passing, and then we're linking all together here. So it does feel like uh, all these characters are going to cross paths at some point. Very cool stuff. And you know what I love so much about this? And I feel like it's something that maybe the Mandalorian could even take some notes from and do better is that, Everything this season was important, whether you realized it or not. The Ferrex initial, you know, meeting of Axis and Luthen and uh, Cassian and them blowing things up. The Aldani raid. Yep. Everything that came after it with obviously the prison break. Everything actually matters. Like, it's not like, hey, forget about what happened in episode one. We're on to the finale. Like, everything has been building up to this point. And that's one of the things in The Mandalorian. Some weeks it feels like. Oh, yeah, like episode two, you don't even need to remember that. That was a one off. And Mm -hmm. that's fine. It's a different type of show. And it's one that I still probably enjoy more as a fan. But this is just it feels like that next level on Andor. The fact that we're even having Mando versus Andor talks just shows how good Andor is, because I'm pretty sure Mando is as close to a clean sweep for Star Wars fans as any piece of Star Wars content is since the original trilogy. And uh and I'm even the original. I'm, I don't think anyone would even nitpick like, oh, I was I didn't really love Jedi or I didn't really love this and that. I think everyone basically agrees for the most part. Empire is the fucking best. And then Mando is by far the best TV show until now. And again, we've had our moments with the other two shows this season. The Obi-Wan scenes, the Vader scenes in Obi-Wan were awesome. And the Mando comic book 
hidden inside the book of Boba Fett were awesome too. Um, but this one absolutely nailed it. And now it gets me excited for what is it? The Acolyte is the one that's coming uh, in the future? Uh, yeah, and that'll be the final days of the High Republic era, which is like hundreds of years before everything, where the Sith is starting to like come back and we're going to dive into like the Sith relics and all that. I would love for that to have the same kind of tone that this has. Yes, very much so. Me too. Me too. All right, let's get into Andor episode 11. We open with Cassian and Melshi climbing on the side of a cliff, kind of like free soloing. They're like, my, my hands don't work anymore. Like, I can't go any further. I would be screwed. My my Raynauds, I, I can't do that. In the snow and everything. Explain to the people what Raynauds is, because I know it from th- knowing you. But tell, tell the folks at home here. If you're not familiar, Raynauds is like a disorder, pretty common disorder. I think a lot of people have it where you lose circulation in the cold in like your hands, your feet, your nose, your ears, like stuff like that. So they turn white or like purple and it, it's pretty painful. So we're looking for a cure. You know, we're, we're going to do the Michael Scott race for a cure <laughs> one of these days. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to survive on this planet. Well, I, that was the perfect way to open it up. Cause we've all been in those situations where you've just been stuck in a spot for uh, not not that situation. On the side not of a pri- cliff? Not As a you're running from prison? <laughs> prison break on the side of a cliff. Where you're just in a spot where you're like, I'm stuck in this in this exact pose for way too long. And there's a part of my body that is like throbbing from being too long. Could be uh could be our boy Bob Fox was trapped in an airplane where the guy, there was an extra seat on the aisle seat, right? And he refused to get up and he just sat in the middle seat next to the entire time. A big guy like me, I would just be cramped up against the um, window and at some point, like my left ass cheek would just fall asleep. And I, oh, I'm basically the same as Oh, my left was asleep. Yeah, it's still asleep from the flight last night. If people <laughs> didn't see my tweets from last night, we can get right into this too because I have to tell the people about this. I have a flight... Back home last night, we did a bunch of PFL shooting in Florida. It's going to be great. The video is very funny stuff. I'm actually banged up from it. Look at this, Bruce. Ugh. Look at that. That's war scars, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have a window seat. The flight is nowhere near full. So I'm like, okay, this is great. I might have some space here. Some guy sits down next to me in the middle seat, right next to me. We have no one in our aisle seat. They end the boarding. They close the door. I figure he's going to scoot over to the aisle seat. We're both going to have some room here. He doesn't. He's probably maybe 60 years old. And I say to him, hey, man, like, do you want to move over to the aisle seat? We'll have a little more room. Or if you would prefer the window seat, I'll move to the aisle seat even. And you can sit in the window seat. And he said, I'm OK. <laughs> Just like that. He said, I'm OK. And I was like, oh, OK. He got up multiple times during the flight, Clem, went to the bathroom, stretched out, sat back down in the middle seat. I was trying to like man spread a little bit, give yeah. him a hint, trying to like dominate the armrest. He wasn't taking a hint. It was crazy. Did you throw some coughs out there? I mean, we live in a world now where no, a couple no, coughs I might didn't. even Maybe scare that, a guy out of the street. That would have been the, the move, yeah. 60 years old too? Like he's probably just like, fuck this, fuck this kid. He might have just requested a whole new aisle but altogether. How fucked up is that? That's not cool, man. I would have – there's two things that will be going through my head. Either one, this guy's like kind of like coming on to me maybe or something like that. Like anyone that's – the thought, yeah. Right? Or he's just an asshole, I guess, and he's just like, fuck this. It's so weird. Or like he, he's an extreme rule follower. That's a possibility, too. He's an extreme rule he follower. He thinks he'll get in trouble for moving over. Yeah. yeah. It's like, listen, dude, I'm 24B. I cannot get out of 24B. I would assign <laughs> 24B. I don't want to get arrested by the air marshal on this flight, sir. Uh, I but- wish they would have arrested him. I wish we would have gotten pulled over by, like, an imperial transport, <laughs> like, in this episode. And be like, excuse me, uh, 28B? We're going to need to see some identification. You're not doing the right thing in there. I actually, that would be incredible. I actually had the opposite happening once where I switched, uh, like I switched to an aisle seat like 10 minutes after you could take the seatbelt sign off. And the, the stewardess like, uh, excuse me, sir, you have to go back to your seat. That's nice. I'm like, dude, there's like 30 empty seats here. And that's at, the worst. That's was, an Imperial. That's an it, Imperial that, flight attendant. That was an Imperial flight attendant. I actually, it wasn't 30. It was like two empty seats, but one of them was an aisle with no one next to him. And I was like, come on, there's nothing here. I'm as a big guy. Big guys know this. You go on for that check-in, even the night before, once you're able to check in, you're looking at that seat map being like, all right, where's the extra spaces here? We're always looking for that. On the way down to Vegas, I have my guy Zah next to you one time. I go, Zah, you are the big guy's dream right here. If I have to be in a full plane, there's no one I'd rather be next to you. I'm sure he didn't feel the same towards me. So uh, shout out to everyone who's been through that kind of thing that our guy Bob Fox has been. Because you probably thought you were, you're like, once he got up to the bathroom, like, oh, baby, he's going to come back. Totally. And, like, everyone does that, you know? So, uh, and I also do respect, um, 
did you say and go next to the window? Because there is part of the aisle seat, as we learned in wedding, uh, the wedding singer, where you get hit by that drink cart. It is the absolute. Worst. I hate that. Yeah, so I'm you, a you window were seat guy to for even that reason. Take that. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. I, I was like, well, because it was a quick flight, Florida to Jersey, so it was what two two hours, twenty two minutes, hours, something yeah. like that. I was like quick flight but the whole flight still i was just like this sucks it was like, but <laughs> listen this isn't about my flight dilemma this is about andor we'll get back to the star wars we, world now we seem like real assholes complaining about you know flights where we have you know tv and internet and these guys are escaping prison and this guy's hands are going numb from being on the side of a fucking mountain i know from my shoot i have like band-aids on my fingers and i've been complaining about these little like blisters i have and as soon as I see like the shot of their bloody hands and feet, like bare feet on the side of a mountain, I was like, all right, it could be worse. Hey, they shouldn't have been coughing in front of an Imperial officer after Aldani happened. That's just, <laughs> that's on them. <laughs> so we learned some very sad news right away. Marva has passed and B2 Emo, our guy is so sad. It's sad to see it. It said mechanical whimper. Oh no, I missed that. It said that's that on the, the closed captions. That's what the closed caption said about our guy B2 Emo. He he got real emo in this moment. And they take her body out. Cinta, who's still spying on everything, sees that they take her body out. Let me throw this out there right away, Clem. Is she for sure dead? People seem sad, right? But Cassian's friend also told B2 Emo, like the the daughters of Ferrix like need you. It is of grave importance. Is she gonna pull some kind of joker type thing remember joker in the dark night where he comes in in the body bag they're like we got him he fucking comes up and he's like how about alive and he puts the knife to the guy's mouth is marva gonna pull one of those at the funeral my guy bob fox it wasn't even on my radar good work bob you are now the guy who's making his susless and not believing what you see I that did not even register in my mind. Again, they do the little floaty thing, which they always do in stars. Mm -hmm. You don't really see it, but they could just all be playing because they know, like the way Bubba Bix got, you know, scooped up. They know people are watching now, and Marva is like, it feels weird to give her an off-camera death, right? We've been saying yes. like she's going to make this big sacrifice for the rebellion. It's going to inspire Andor. Like, if now maybe I'm being disrespectful to the dead, if she really is dead. Did she put together like a strategy that Andor is going to find in her room or something and be like, oh, my God, this is such a good plan. Uh, my gut says we didn't see the body. And I think there's a reason for that. I think she might be alive. So uh, for the people that have been in the basement going back to WandaVision and I called a uh, dog that ended up getting killed, a very cute dog at that. So cute. Uh, I, I said he was sus. He was the, I think he was like number one on the sus list for weeks. Uh Calling a potential dead woman, uh, you know, sus or, you know, faking it, that could be a problem as well. But, uh, you know, hashtag problematic Bob Fox over here, <laughs> as you learned on the Black Panther podcast for anyone who hasn't seen him Wakanda forever. So, it, man, Bob, I was going to say RIP my dog Marva. I don't know if I have to. And you know what? There's nothing in the world I want to see more than B2Emo go, M -m -m Marva's alive? And just hear the, the excitement in his voice. Be too happy. He'll be so happy if Marva's back. Dude, he... People, I had someone, a couple people, to, uh, no, one person tweeted me, they're like, that droid isn't that good? What fucking show are you watching, man? That droid rules. is elite. He is fucking so, he's like a good dog. He's just like a good, cute dog. Oh, he's the best. Even so. the way, like, they had shots of him, like, it was the close-up shot where he saw in his reflection and stuff in this episode. And, like, the way he moves up and down, the way he can look up, look down, like, he... He emotes. He actually emotes. Emo. Emo. emo yeah. I don't know. Something like that. But I think he's elite. He's a great droid. I will want Marva. Like, oh, he, it's so goddamn cute, man. He, I, he, you know what he is? He's kind of like a little kid who has like a little bit of a speech impediment, mm -hmm. but he's just enough to just cute enough to make you just fall in love with him. Ah. Oh. So Cassian and Melshi want to steal a quad jumper. They see a quad jumper. They see a couple aliens, which we wanted a little more of in the show. Yep. They gave us some aliens. And they get caught in these weird sticky nets. Like the aliens see them running. And they're like, are they? All right, hit the net. And they hit it. <laughs> Takes them over right away. And they're like, we swear, like, we were just in prison from the Empire. They're talking back and forth. They kind of reminded me of Unkar Plot from The Force Awakens, where it's like, this is worth two quarter portions. They kind of have <laughs> yes. those vibes about them. And they set them free pretty quickly. They're like, all right, they're not killing anybody. They're all right. Like, where do you want to go? And he's like, I want to go to Niamos or whatever. So they're like, all right, go to Niamos. Get in the quad jumper. 
I love the uh, I love those guys, man. They were they're they're, great. They're like ice fishermen from Minnesota. That's what I put down in my notes. Like they're yeah. just a couple cool guys, and the way that they're they were talking. Oh, hey, uh, no empire. Eh? <laughs> they're they're little codes towards each other. They had like, some a, line about not catching any fish that day. They were like, <laughs> "We're catching more on land than we are in sea." <laughs> yeah, and the whole thing with them, you polluted my water empire. What's going on here? And this fucking Melshi guy here, like. We, we're going to have to, like, develop a relationship, obviously, because we see him in Rogue One. He's going to be in our orbit at some point, I imagine, for the rest of the way with the series. Oh, for one, man. Like, like our guy Andor's like, all right, we got to sneak around. We got to get there. And he's just running his ass right into slime nets, which, by the way, completely didn't see that coming from these guys. No. It was so casual, too. They just, like, he kind of just, like, clicked the button. It was like, boom, just nailed them. Uh, so the, the, the quad jumper, all-time, like, twist. That they're, they're just like, oh, yeah, we'll take you to Niamos. Yeah. Just a couple of just a cool – out of everyone in the Star Wars universe, I'd love to have some sort of blue beer with because that's probably all they have is blue fucking beer as we know. These guys are at the top of the list. These guys are what I thought the Gamorrean guards were going to be in fucking <laughs> uh, Book of Boba Fett. Two cool motherfuckers who, like, give them credit. Like, they they nailed they, – they, they were able to trap very well, and they also have a heart. A plus, yeah. A plus characters. I love these dudes. Also, we saw some blue like pelicans or seagulls this week. Did you pick up on that? Like, I missed we that. Back, yeah, when we went back to that planet where Cassian, the Miami planet, where he had to get his credits and all that from the shower, there was just a quick shot of like two seagulls, like kind of like playing with each other, and they're blue. I thought it looked cool. Was it that same light blue that is ever that's in the milk and yeah. everything else? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much. That's like. That's always been one of my favorite colors is light blue. Whenever I have to like choose something, I always go for the light blue. So I, I do appreciate that. Maybe that's why I'm a Star Wars fan. Yeah, true. Um, let's tell the people about Game Time, one of our favorites. It is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports created by fans for fans. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. This is maybe something that Melshi could do for going 0 for 1. I know they just split up, but it'd be <laughs> a hell of a gift to Cassian to come back and be like, listen, I know I kind of screwed up. Uh, here's for putting up with me two tickets to, I don't know, Taylor Swift. The 1975, um, Blink 182, all these artists that people are having a hard time getting tickets to, just wait till the last minute. Give Game Time a shot. If you haven't given them a shot, I don't know what you're waiting for. We've had tons of Barstool fans using it. They're hitting us up on social media, telling us about the great deals that they're getting. And if you go to Game Time now, go to the app, download the app on your phone, go to the account tab, create a login, and redeem the code BASEMENT, all caps BASEMENT. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's so easy to use, amazing deals. You go see Bluey if you're a parent like Clem. Go see Concert if you're a guy like me. Go see a Knicks game, a Rangers game. They got everything on Game Time. We're trying to hook up Kelly Keys with some Taylor Swift tickets at a discount. So Kelly, uh, no, Kelly's a basement girl. We know this. She, for as, as much as she loves her uh, reality TV and gossip shows and stuff like that, basement girl. She Blue loves her Harry girl. Potter too. She's a That's bit of a true. nerd. That's true. She is a Potter girl. <laughs> so she can get her take. What is it? Eras? New? I got, yes. I put out a, a tweet joking around that I, I think I said I got eight Taylor Swift tickets. I meant to only buy four. <laughs> and so I got DMs from people. I got text messages from friends who saw the tweet. I have, And I felt so bad who were like, dude, my girlfriend's dying for these tickets. I need to go. Can you just sell me whatever you got? And then like the real ones were like, you only could buy six. That's the max. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't know, guys. I, I, I'm, I, Taylor Swift is so far out. Like, I don't have a daughter who's old enough to want to go to a Taylor Swift concert. And my wife is a Backstreet Boys fan for life. She's not, she enjoys Taylor. She's not a diehard. And I couldn't take out a second mortgage to get tickets there. But you know what? $20 off using the basement. Maybe I will go just to, just to do it. So uh, shout out to our people at Game Time for helping with the pod. Keep the basement lights on. Back to Andor. Dedra is informed of Marva's death. And she says, grant them a funeral. Like, give them a funeral. Let's see what happens when we put them all in one box and just let them go. And, and make sure it's a small thing. Limit the amount of people that could be there. Limit the amount of funding that goes into it. Um, and we learn that on Ferrix, the dead are bricked. It's basically cremated, but then they're made into a brick and engraved. And they find a wall for them and they put you on a wall. Kind of a nice thing. And also like a cool thing that you don't hear a lot about in the Star Wars universe. That's the kind of thing that makes the Star Wars universe feel deeper. Like Ferrix feels more like a real planet with traditions now. Yes, that's actually a good point. And it's a unique tradition that nothing we would have heard if you're like, oh, they cremate the body. That's one thing. Putting in a brick. 
I was trying to think like, I, okay, I don't think a brick is metal. What would be a metal like put in a blaster? <laughs> and everyone gets oh, like, yeah. Marva's gonna be that's that's how I know this is bullshit. Marva should be put in a blaster. Marva, like, you know how they took the the robot from Solo and put her into the fucking Falcon. Yep. Like just put Marva into the fucking blaster. Put and like they, a little engravement. Yeah. <laughs> Can we uh, R.I.P. my dog Marva right in the the blaster. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they later on they say she's already put in the brick or something like that, which mm-hmm. I mean I'm sure can be done in that time period. But again, it's another time where we don't see the body. I am so in on this Bob Fox conspiracy theory right now. These are the innocent conspiracy theories that don't hurt anyone. This is why I like having fun. And I know that like everyone having their fun with the flat earthing stuff is how this all this crazy world we live in now. And that's how QAnon starts. But you know what? I'm having fucking fun. Marva's alive. I love it. And, and But uh, what, what would be like a cool – so a brick – Getting it, I always say getting your ashes scattered in like an ocean or maybe a mm-hmm. baseball field or something that like means a lot to you. I'm trying to think like what would be another cool thing you could get, like you could get done. Like on the Jersey Shore, they they sell benches. Maybe at the bench right by Midway Cheesesteaks. Have that say Robbie Fox. Or how about we put Robbie Fox in some uh, some Wiz? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the uh the south park when cartman puts the ashes in the chocolate yeah. milk mix oh uh, no he puts it in the chili con carne that's what it was that's what it was yeah i'll tell you right now for the people that haven't seen that episode that is maybe early the, south park might be season one early south of scott tenderman must die that's the homework assignment for today for anyone in the basement that hasn't <laughs> seen it it is one of the most unreal you kind of got a little spoiled so don't go back to the reason for all it yeah. just go scott tenderman must die prying youtube or some streaming station some channel. plus maybe they have it yeah I know they have some kind of south park yeah right. And it is one of the greatest things of all time. So, yeah, being put in food, maybe not the best thing, but being put in a I, – I, I loved it. I love the whole brick side of it and all. It, and I hope that at one point Marva is put in brick. However, she's not in a brick. She's I, ready. Yeah, there was importance about the wall too. I feel like we're going to see like the wall. Or I'm also, this is going to be like the – the you know how there's like the religion then there's the offshoots of the religion? This is going to be my conspiracy offshoot. Marva is like, put a bomb in me. And then blow me up. You know what? It's a different Dark Knight reference. She puts the cell phone in her. Yes. And then gets the phone call. <laughs> We've done so much bad thing to this poor innocent dead woman's body. Andor's going to imagine if Cassie and Andor is listening to the podcast and it's like, this he is might my be. fucking like, this mom you guys saying, are talking yeah. about. What the hell's going on? Here? Also, every week we found a way to relate this show to the Dark Knight. Yes. I don't know how, but I love it. It's a Dark Knight podcast disguised as a Star Wars <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Vel looks for Luthen at his, at his shop. She talks to the assistant. They kind of have a little bit of tension back and forth. She's like, look what I've been doing. I gave him Aldani. What have you given him recently? She kind of gives him like a, 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 Luth, a Luthen type speech where she's like, I've given him this. I've given him that. I've given him, you know, happiness, this, that. I sleep with ghosts, all that shit. And in the background, I noticed there's a Gungan shield, like from oh. Phantom Menace, like what they used. And someone pointed out on Reddit that a lot of the artifacts across Luthen's shop are like rebellion themed, like Padme Amidala's headdress is in oh. there. And it's like a nice, subtle way of being like, he loves rebellion across all, you know, planets, continents, whatever it may be. He loves rebellion. This motherfucker, he, he's not throwing some Mustafar stuff in there. There's no M- Imperial trinkets or anything like that. You know who I guarantee Luthen hates the Yankees, hates the oh, fuck out of the Yankees. he didn't have to go there. I'm, I know you're a Yankee fan, Bob, but I'm telling you, Luthen hates the Yankees. He you guys are, you've literally called yourself the evil empire. <laughs> he probably fucking gave the Astros that wire. <laughs> it's a garbage can, and this is what we're going to do. They, they were like, at what cost? And he's like, it doesn't matter. You just have to take them down. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there the the tensions are high. We could say that between Luthen and his uh, person, it's higher than Bob Fox when there was an earthquake in Vegas. <laughs> it was an earthquake, yeah. Or when you um, thought you were having a heart attack or a panic attack or whatever you had, and you thought Trevor was going to call nine one one. That was bad. I told him to call nine one one multiple times. He he made the great decision to say no. Trent and another just quick left turn here on the pod. Trent not calling nine one one as you're like begging him to. I would have figured that'd be the first guy in the world to call 911. Trent seems yeah. like a guy that, like, break in case of emergency. The emergency isn't even Weirdly, happening. Weirdly, that was the responsible shattered. thing to do, too. Yes. Yes. Shout out like, our no, guy, he's Trent. Like, he's like, you're going to calm down. He found my anxiety medication and gave me that. Brilliant. <laughs> 
Trent, Trent, Trent's a responsible dude. Responsible dude. Shout out Trent. Uh, B2 gets Cassian's friend to stay the night in such an adorable scene where he's just like staying. Someone said it looked like you're staying in a dog bed. And he was just like in the corner of the room. And then he's like, can you please stay the night? Like, I don't want to be alone right now. And he's like, all right, one night. And he immediately like comes out and runs up to him and kind of looks like he's like snuggling up to him. The guy it was adorable. <laughs> it, it was so cute. And it, it very much, as I say, he's he is like a dog. That is a move my kids have played on me. Just tonight, just 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 stay in the room for the night. And then it's like, yep, I'll see you tomorrow night too, Sienna. <laughs> Sienna does a thing now where she just comes in our room. We have like a recliner in our bedroom as well. And she just sleeps on the recliner every night like she is a dog. And I'm like, you can't sleep on a recliner every night. It's bad for your sleep. She it's bad for your body. Sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then it just ends up being me bringing her back to her room. She's awake. And I'm like, I have to lay here. So our guy Bix, he puts... Uh, and again when you have like that voice with that speech impediment it's like you can't say no it's it's like the force it's the jedi mind trick it's the kids jedi mind trick he's like but, but please i just don't want to be alone <laughs> <laughs> bix is looking rough speaking of b- 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 bix she is looking real rough about as rough as you could be looking she's got the full pete davidson butthole eyes going on <laughs> her hair's messed up and they ask her about krieger they're like is this the guy that you connected cassian to the axis and they show us Krieger, as we as we talked about earlier. We see him, mm-hmm. and she kind of makes a face that we don't see her answer, but I think she's going to say yes. I think she's going to say, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, they they, they leave you hanging there, and I, I, I was like, that must be on purpose. <laughs> this guy Krieger just has the entire world coming down. I know. Like, right this, what did this guy deserve? What did he do to deserve this? You know what he did? He got like a fucking like a, a, a name that sounds like a problem for the Empire. Anton Krieger, Krieger you're like, yeah him it's fucking that, that is a bad boy name so he has to kind of live with it again like uh what was the guy's name from last episode that we slandered lonnie it's like if yeah. you told me lonnie is coming like fuck lonnie <laughs> we're not even gonna throw a tie fighter at lonnie but anton krieger like oh shit we gotta we gotta come down on him and again going back to the kids analogy and all the parents are gonna nod their heads and agree or shit anyone that watches the youtube that's what you look like when you have a newborn child. Anyone that watched me after one of my two kids were born, they saw that look. I looked like Bubba Bix. I was fucking just, you just have that stare. You just have the fucking butthole eyes. You have like, she has like color just gone from her body. Yeah. And I, someone did a episode one versus episode 11 of Bix on Twitter. And it is stark just how different they look. Remember, remember episode I don't know if it was episode one or two or three when she's she's in the smudge room, right? Oh, yeah. And we're like, oh, down. yeah, we're getting down. And now it's like, I don't even want to say that about Bubba Bix. It's like, it, I feel like I'm talking about a dead person. She's more dead than Marva is. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> so Leda, Mon's daughter, starts saying these weird prayers in the room with people. Let's, let, we will, you know, be, be going to acceptance and all this weird, weird shit they're saying over and over again. And Mon and Vell are talking about it. And she's like, yeah, she's getting into the old ways. Like my husband's into it. He, he, you know, is, is helping this hobby out. He's supporting it and everything. Didn't you say the husband was almost like kind of just chill with it though. He's not like pushing. Yeah, it. I guess. Yeah. He like, he's cool with it. Um, just weird a, a weird scene where it's like going back to the prayers oh what's up we got aj we have a, there's a little sith lord in his own right ship that girl to the dude whose money you need right now right just yeah. ship him out ship, which ship it sounds her. like she's gonna do that yeah i think so like i don't know if it's like a is it a religious thing a political thing is it an empire thing do we do we know what it is they said like the old ways Yes, the old ways. So I don't know what that means necessarily because they didn't really go into it. It sounded like a little bit of all of the above. Some Sith stuff? I don't know what's going on. But it, it, it sounds like something bad. It sounds like not a good thing. And it sounds like something you should get your money by shipping her off and betrothing her to that drug dealer. Like, is he a drug dealer? Can we just call that guy a drug dealer? Davo, <laughs> whatever his name is. He might be. It's and funny drugs. that you're saying that. And AJ's yeah. sitting in your lap. Yeah. For the people that are, are listening and not watching, we have AJ. He's showing this is Chicoletta, as all the parents know out there. This is from Paw Patrol stuff we have going on. AJ, uh, they got the day home from school today. So he's getting mcdonald's if he lets me finish the rest of this podcast without interrupting right buddy we got wakanda forever toys at toys r us no, at, uh, at, at Happy no we don't because because it's passion's birthday oh yeah it's passion's birthday so maybe it's going to be a new toy so let's go watch let's go watch something on our ipad and we're almost done thank you oh, <laughs> hold on i got i i, I came ready for this situation yep. so mon says she's found a solution she's like teary-eyed and she's like kind of saying to Vel, I think I'm going to let 
Gustavo bring his son over, who we know is a shithead before we even meet him. And I don't know, betrothal, is that what they call it? Like propose a betrothal? Yeah, that's what I'm calling it is Game of Thrones shit here. We're betrothing them and let them get married, have their little evil babies together. We'll worry about that. That might be Snoke. That might be the original <laughs> Snoke right there. It might be that kid, that brood, that that, that those that couple's baby, because uh that was some creepy stuff there. But he's bald sense, already. Right? He kind of looks like Snoke at 14. <laughs> <laughs> um and just, I, I just love Val, how she kind of just plays it off. She's like, why are you here? I'm Val. She's like, oh, to see you. And just plays like the cool aunt, the cool yeah. crunchy aunt who went to hip uh, hip hop, went to Woodstock, had some fun. Woodstock, original Woodstock. We're not talking Woodstock 99. That's a little too much for Val, right? Val might have went to see, was Alanis at Woodstock 99? She might have uh, saw Alanis at Woodstock 99 or 94. She might have been or she might have been 94. I was going to say, that's the under talked about one, which was actually like a good time for people. What's up? Ninety four seemed like an awesome. It's the mud I fight was alive. one, but like, yeah, mud fight compared to like the potential like death and destruction of the entire Woodstock vibe and era, very different. So, uh, Anvel coming in and just being uh, uh, an Anvel. I know she's sharing a bed with sharing a private. What do we say? We said they said sharing, sharing a, a blanket. Bed, we said the sharing a blanket. Yeah, they're sharing a blanket. We said sharing private parts with each other. Looking cute. Aunt Val was looking cute there. Just going to say that right there. Not going to, you can bonk me, but I just said Aunt Val looks cute. I like how she, you oh. know what? This is the thing. Aunt Val, she cleans up well. That's how I should say it. Cause we meet her in Aldani and she's like this like badass rebel. And then she does pull off like being a member of this affluent family. Yeah, she does. Serial, our guy we meet up with, he receives a message from Morlana one that's breaking up the whole time. It's like eh, eh, eh. Cassian and or mother here dead. And he's like, what, what? He's getting mad. It kind of looked like his mattress is like, he sleeps on the floor almost from this scene. I was like, does he even not have a box spring? It would be a very serial thing to not have a box spring and sleep on the floor. But <laughs> it's enough to kind of like fire him up. And the mother's like, oh, like, congratulations. You're fucking, your whole vengeance vendetta. All right, good. Good for you. He's like, get out of your mom, my room. And he puts something in the safe too. Uh the entire serial backstory and just having it all being pieced together for us, I am very thankful for it, right? It's like the Imperial uh, scumbags aren't born, aren't made, they're born, right? It's like a linebacker. Yeah. You have to be a special kind of person with a special kind of family that allows you to do the shit they do. And that's kind of exactly what this guy does. I mean, again, no box spring, no chance of a box spring. I'm going to say, even at this advanced age, doesn't even have a bottom sheet. And there's like oh. old stains and stuff on it. Probably milk stains from this fucking scumbag. Yeah, cereal you're right. Leader. He definitely there's blue milk bed. stains yeah. everywhere on this fucking guy's bed. Oh, he's the worst. The mom's the worst. The only potential redeeming quality of this was who I thought it was going to be at first during the uh, video message. I thought we were getting Uncle Harlow. Uncle I Harlow. So when are we getting? Excited. him? Are we not getting him in this season? If we don't get him. By the end of this season, I am going to write a str- I I will do this for the podcast. I won't really be an electric podcast or video. I am going to write a very strongly worded letter to the people <laughs> at the Walt Disney Company. Uh, I'm going to say I want to see Uncle Harlow in season two. There's also a chance Uncle Harlow is going to blow up when Marva's body explodes. <laughs> Yeah, 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 true. <laughs> if she goes boom, Uncle Harlow might go with her. Where do you think what do you think the odds are at the Barstool Sports book that Uncle Harlow is uh at the Marva funeral scene? I'm gonna put it at like plus five fifty, and I'm taking that bet for the for the record responsibly. What came into my mind right away was like plus four fifty. So I was going even even better odds than you, but you're probably so we'll say five. We'll we'll split the we'll difference say five. And say yeah, plus yeah, five hundred. Yeah. Are we gonna? So we're gonna responsibly place a couple bucks on Uncle Harlow being. At, it's like, oh hey, Harlow, how's it like? Just in passing, they're not gonna beat it over our head. And then the question is, is he good or bad? I still think he's probably bad because yeah. this entire family seems bad. And Harlow does seem. Usually the names do match up with where they sit on the spectrum of light and dark. And Harlow feels a little more bad than good. But I'm hoping Harlow's a good guy and turns the serial guy around. Even though again, some. I imagine a lot of mass murderers, a lot of bad people, they grew up sleeping on the floor without a box spring, no sheets on their bed. That's the kind of people we're dealing with here with cereal. Don't like them. And that whole, but like, it, it had you like frantic, right? Like, yeah. Oh, is he going to hear what's going on? And he basically says like, Andor is, you know, there's a connection. Like he might come to the funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Get back to Ferrix, basically. Um, we just talked about some bad people, Clem. Now let's talk about some good people, our friends over at mm-hmm. Morgan and Morgan. 
America's largest personal injury law firm. They have over 800 attorneys and offices across the country. If you're going up against big companies for the money you deserve, it requires having the big guns on your side. Like we tell you every week, kind of a rebellion versus the empire situation when you're in a, a case like this. If you get injured, you have to go against a big company. You think, how am I going to beat them? Get one of these lawyers at Morgan & Morgan. If you're in a car accident, you didn't know you could get a lawyer. If it's, it's a mess, you don't know how to navigate the situation, they can help you out. When you're injured, you deserve more, and Morgan & Morgan has more offices, more lawyers, and more than $15 billion recovered. And the best part, you don't have to pay anything unless you win. So if you lose your case, they're completely free to work with. But let's be honest, you're probably not going to lose your case because Morgan & Morgan's the best in the biz. So if you're injured, visit forthepeople.com slash basement to see if you have a case. It's no cost to you. That's forthepeople.com slash basement shout out morgan and morgan a great sponsor and uh great for stoolies to actually know about that stuff you don't think about that until shit hits the fan basically now we got a, a company for you the only the only uh, if if andor in episode one got morgan and morgan he hired them that would be the end of the show it would empire's be like, off his tail got so, empire's off his tail Roll credits end of season end of series a season finale a series finale in the season premiere, series premiere. And That's then like, like Back to the Future, Rogue One fades into a different movie where he <laughs> survives at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All because of Morgan and Morgan. Shout out Morgan. The, the Empire, the Emperor's Gonzo. Darth Vader probably becomes good. Mm-hmm. Helps like raise Luke's grandchildren. All because of Morgan and Morgan. And The Last Jedi is the most universally loved Star Wars movie of all time. <laughs> The first, no, it's actually there's no last Jedi. It's just <laughs> billions of Jedi is the name of the movie, and everything is good. Everyone born is a Jedi in the best way possible. Thanks to Morgan. You know what? This is a hell of an ad reader. Right? It is. <laughs> we, we, it. we just kind of ripped it out of the blue. <laughs> so Andor steals his stuff back. He goes to his old apartment where the shit was just still on top of the shower. Just whoever was staying there, and there was someone staying there, an alien sleeping in his bed. I don't know if it was an apartment, a hotel room. They never checked. So what happened there? This this was the thing I was trying to wonder. Did he bet another person? Yeah, I used the word bet as a verb there. Uh, is that an adverb? I don't know. But I like, did he sleep with someone else? And then once they passed out, you know, post post coitus uh, nap, did he go back in there? Because it wasn't I the same girl. That that's for sure. No, I thought, and it was an alien, so I can't be sure of this. I thought it was a dude, and I thought he just snuck in. I thought, like, he doesn't live there anymore, so he just snuck in the window, grabbed his shit, and snuck out. (laughs) I love how you preface that. It's an alien, so I can't be. I thought it was a dude. Oh, that's the basic. like a dude alien, you know? (laughs) Had the vibes of a dude alien, I will say that. But, like, all of his credits were still there. Like, all he had so a briefcase full of credits and, and a blaster. Oh, like that would kill me if I found out if I'm that alien and being like looking yeah. up and you just see like he left like one little credit behind like, oh, my God, there was like a billion dollars up there. That w- I'm going to have to look in this house. I was now. just about to say, I'm going to check above the fridge tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Those little uh, the, you had the basement drafts with the basement with uh, the dog walk. Right. When they're talking about the little, little things in the basement that you could just poke up there. Like if you if you're in a basement, there could be some treasures or some just weird shit. That goes on in the basement, too. That could be up there. I know people have found comic books in the walls of their houses. Like, when they're knocking down sheet sheetrock or whatever, uh, the, the walls. Like, people have found, like, very, very expensive comic books in their walls, which is crazy. Oh, man. I could do anything for some Imperial credits right now. <laughs> Luthen visits Saw Gerrera again, and he tells him the ISB knows about Krieger's plan. Like, this is kind of your decision to make now what we want to do. I'll put it in your hands, and Krieger is like obviously a a sitting duck for these people saw doesn't like him but he's like how do i know you wouldn't do the same thing to me like if i were in krieger's position are you an isb like do you have someone in my camp he starts going a little bit crazy and it's a good foreshadowing moment of how he gets crazy in rogue one Mm -hmm. where it's like of course he's fucking so afraid of everything because he has people backstabbing him and saying, ah, we could kill 30 men in Krieger for the sake of this one spy. And he goes like, do you have a spy here? Who's your spy here? Luthen's like, it's tubes. And it's the two tubes guy. And he's like, what? He's like, I'm not your fucking, why do you, why do you say fuck me? It's the 50 cent. <laughs> and he pulls him I'm over, done. grabs his blaster, puts his gun up to him. And it's like, <laughs> Luthen's the man. 
That was one of the best scenes I've seen. It's tubes. It's tubes. It's tubes. And tubes is like, it ain't me, dude. He's talking about a different tubes. What just his voice, everything about that just made me laugh so goddamn hard. And that is actually a great point. And the fact that they have Forrest Whitaker, who's just there to just absolutely he is so much above just being this bit part of this awesome series. He won Best Actor, didn't he? I'm pretty sure he won he uh, an Oscar an for Oscar winner, yeah. The Last King of uh, Africa or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know the name of the movie. I don't know my. I don't know it either. Uh, this is this is much different. Like if much di- like if I did this and, and Jeff with Jeff D. Lowe on uh, Lights Camera Barcel, he'd be like, "What are you talking about right now, guys? <laughs> We're talking Best Actor. That is one of the biggest awards there is." Um, but that's actually a great point. Like that could be the seed that causes the complete mayhem and whatever is about to take place in Spellhouse and whatever is about to take place the rest of this episode. So our boy Luthen, for as good as he is, and he kind of has to do that too, right? Like he's kind of up his back's against the wall. Did you know he was going to Saw when he's like, I have to go see him? I thought we were getting someone new. I wasn't sure. And then when I saw Saw, I was like, all right, that makes sense. Yeah, as soon as I saw Tubes, it was like, all right, we're back with Saw's camp. And <laughs> I <tubes>. love <laughs> you know, you know me. You know how my brain works. Like Lobot is in my top five. Tubes will be in my top three oh, yeah. favorite characters of this year, is what it's all said and done, even if we don't see him again. And I'm not positive. I think he might have been named by fans because he's in Rogue One just in a brief shot and he's got got the two tubes, and people started calling him two tubes. And oh. they, they were just like, fuck it. That's a great name. Two tubes. That's that- like him. That was when two chains was probably big too, so it definitely <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Two, two. <laughs> I love Saw's line where he says, "Let's call it war." At the end, I was like, "Okay, this is a fucking Star War. This is the most Star Warsy Star War of all time." I loved when they said uh, the W word. I was like, "Yes, there it is." Is that the first time war has been said in like? <laughs> can't be, but can't be right. They don't say it a lot. Like they don't they don't remind you of that often. That. They say like the Galactic Civil War and, and shit like yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. But if they just reference it as war in general, I mean, I, I, even the they could have said in any of the uh, the nine movies, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> Some of that could just look up on Wikipedia on the fly either, so it's going to be be hard to say. But it, it as long as I'm not the only person where it kind of just stuck there, like whoa. Like we're throwing the W word around right now. So I thought that was, that was very cool. Again, shout out my guy too. Can you imagine being tubes too? And you're like, oh shit. Like you're tubes. You're freaking out too. You're like, wait, is he going to kill me too? And you know, Saul's pissed off and he, he's a dude. And, and Luther, this guy I thought was the guy, you know, straw that stirs the drink. And then he throws you under the bus fucking tubes. <laughs> and that's not even your name. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Tubes was you remember the the pirate porn saga at Barstool when Hank oh, was God. obviously innocent, but he was so nervous that he was like, "I'm ninety nine percent sure it's not me," and everyone is like, "What do you mean you're not? Like it's either you or it's not." I feel like Tubes is like, "I'm ninety nine percent sure I'm not his informant, but I don't even know." Yeah, <laughs> I. Uh... <laughs> it's like wait did i uh, dude that that empire the stuff that they probably use that technology it's like maybe i am like the spy i don't know this shit sucks and you so, meant he just called us glasses hey it's glasses over there like <laughs> come on man like, don't talk about my tubes like i'm sure tubes doesn't want people talking about his tubes i thought that was hilarious man luthan gets pulled over by imperials as he's leaving in space and it's an arrestor cruiser pretty cool looking cruiser it's got kind of like big satellites on the side and everything i call the baby star destroyer it's basically like, we're getting like the and the thing is it wouldn't even be that much before like there's probably real star destroyers out by now but it does yeah. feel like because it's not that much before a new hope obviously so i always called it that's just how i i, I uh, reference it the baby star destroyer so this is awesome he gets pulled over he gets like you know a, a transcript uh, a code of some sort to give them he's like um alderon you know, one, four, four, two, whatever it is. And then he starts firing up his thrusters, making it seem like he's got an overheat going on to kind of stall for time. They hit him with a tractor beam, pulls him in. He starts talking to his ship. What's the tractor beam level? Is it two? Okay, good. And the whole time he's talking to them, trying to stall. And then he hits the thrusters and they're like, is this guy trying to fucking leave? Like, is he crazy? Then he hits another button and like shrapnel kind of comes out the side of his ship, the back. And it destroys their tractor beam, like just takes it into smithereens. He starts flying away. They send TIE fighters after him. He has this thing on a ship where it's like two lightsabers almost that could go like that. Kills two TIE fighters with that, destroys the rest of them, takes off into light speed. And we just get this amazing shot of the Imperial that's still on the bridge, just like 
scene of the episode, scene of the episode, one of the scenes of the entire season slash series so far. If last episode hadn't been so jam packed with so many awesome moments, I would just call it our hashtag for this episode is hashtag Luth him. Luth him. He is him. Luth is him. That was unbelievable. I, I geeked out when he just shot the uh, the TIE fighter using the blaster in the ship or whatever. I was like, uh, or the laser gun or whatever. And then, like you said, the way that he, he just shoots it out, knowing the tractor beam will suck in the shrapnel, blows it up. Even the Imperial side of things was cool when he's like, like, oh, should we just let him go? Like, he has to code everything. He's like, we can use the practice. What a lie yeah. to say. That is such like a hardo Imperial crew which again all the imperials just suck but they're to like that guy is actually a pretty good imperial that he actually wants to go through with it and everyone's just doing their job and then that fucking laser thingy comes out like a, a ship lightsaber does does like the, the little barrel roll there to slice them both it was absolute gangster man and i know we can't do it if if Star Wars hadn't just butt fucked every single thing by bringing it back to the original trilogy, I would just be like, fuck it. Luthen is Han Solo's dad. Cause that's the <laughs> only person in the galaxy that I know would have pulled a move that like ingenious, you know, making chicken salad out of chicken shit. Cause he was dead to rights and he somehow escaped. And I just fucking lost my shit. I loved it. Hashtag Luthen. him. Now I want to see two ships that both have the lightsaber thing, have a lightsaber fight in space. <laughs> <laughs> just the, put put a hat on a hat on a hat it's star wars on a star wars it's like a pimp your ride we, i heard you like star wars so we put your star wars in star wars <laughs> yeah bob be careful what you wish for man kathleen gonna like, be like oh really is that what they want and then that's what we're gonna have we're gonna have like the tie sith or something and it's gonna have its fucking lightsaber and we'll be like man that was so goddamn cool and they ruined it and drove it into the ground like everything else cool they do on this goddamn franchise <laughs> So to end, to end the episode, Cassian calls back to Ferrix and he learns that Marva has passed. And the guy tells him, like, Cass, I'm sorry. He's like, stop using names. He's like, I'm sorry, your, your mother's passed. He said Cass like 10 goddamn times after he it. said it. He, he was like, stop saying names. Okay, Cass. Dude, what are you doing? The only person in the galaxy dumber than you is fucking Bail Organa, who like just constantly fucking traps his own people with his goddamn devices. I was losing my mind when he just goes, Cass, okay, Andor. Okay, Cassie and Andor. I'm like, what are we doing, dude? That's your mother, Marva. Shut the fuck like, up. All right, I won't use your name, Cassie and Andor, who used to go by Clem, who comes from the planet. Like, <laughs> he Escaped going. from prison. Was it, you know, at Aldana for the, you know. On the day shift. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I hate this guy. So I, I'm using a whole kid. I just started oh. getting my whole kid. <laughs> if you hear why I'm so mad, I just started getting fired up. I'm turning into the Hulk right now live on the podcast. What a goddamn asshole this guy is. God damn it. Well, who, is this, that was the guy that's, that's, that stayed over with a uh, B. Different B guy. Trino? Okay. So I was going to say, guy. I was going to say, if that was the guy that stayed with uh, our boy, I could have said, all right, look past it. Rebuked. I rebuked this guy to hell and back. And anything bad that happens at this funeral when Marva blows herself up is because of this guy. <laughs> It's almost like gun. I think it was Guns and Roses at the VMAs. They were told like, "Don't curse during your acceptance speech." And Slash was like, "Oh, thank you so fucking much." Oh shit! Sorry. Fuck. Oh fuck. Shit. God. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I never heard that. Before. He almost did one of those. Yeah. You so, got that. That should be on the the uh, my mom's basement TikTok. You got it. I've never heard that story before. True. Yeah. I got. I got to find the clip. I'm pretty sure it was Guns and Roses. Um, Melshi goes and says people have to know about this people have to know about what happened in the prison who knows how many of us even survived who knows if it was just you and me let's split up and let's tell the people so cassian uh, i think cassian gives him a blaster and sends him on his way is like let's do it and cassian just to any episode looks over the water and a lot of people are saying it's a lot like the end of rogue one where he's looking at the the water preparing to die and they're saying it gives maybe new context to that scene where it's like is he thinking about his mother in that moment like all right i'm gonna be back with my mom in a second like if that's the case shit rogue one's hitting hard already like harder than it would have that was the one thing that was the biggest thing we asked for before this season began and they just and i i was like is because that happens a lot with you know, all the stuff, all the nerdy stuff we talk about in the basement where it's like, oh, are they referencing? I mean, shit, we thought Mephisto was coming the whole goddamn season in WandaVision. Um, do you think that was on purpose there? The the Because the, I, I saw that in a lot of places. There's some similar shots, like really, really similar of him looking over the, the sunset, like the horizon. 
So I do, especially it was like a pretty important moment in the season, like for him to learn that, especially if Marvin really is dead. Pretty important. <laughs> no, Marvin, di- Marvin being dead will be the biggest twist I see coming right now <laughs> in my mind. I am so convinced. Uh, also, he could he couldn't have gotten that guy Melshi away from him quick enough. He's like, dude, here, take the blaster, take credits, okay, get out go. of my face, you moron! You got us <laughs> trapped by a couple of lizard fishermen because you're just running towards ships. But I, again, this is. We, we said it uh, at the end of last episode. This is how the rebellion is being born is you need to have people talk about all the shit that's going on there. And then all the other planets, all the other shit, uh, the genocides of alien species that Robbie, you know, had a theory about all this kind of stuff. You have to let it be known. So I did like that, even though being together would probably keep you safer. Being apart is probably the best thing for all the, you know, the hundreds, thousands, millions of other people that are being enslaved. And also shout out to our boy Andor. As that idiot kept saying his name, I'm, I apologize for losing my mind there. I like blacked out in anger as I look back <laughs> at it now. But when there's nothing worse than having to act normal with someone that's like, you know, on the phone with you or in person after you just found out like shitty news. And he keeps it pretty goddamn well together there, you know? And he does. You know, he. we see the, uh, I know the like sun going through the clouds was a nice imagery of maybe our girl Marva, which by the way, not dead, but if she was dead, it was a nice thing, but he just keeps together there, man. And uh, this guy, Andor. And we also hear how uh, uh, Luthen, he's like, he's talking back with the the, the person at the, the shop or whatever. And he's like, I think they're, they're talking about Andor. Where he's like, this piece, this piece is very important. I don't want anyone else to have this piece. It feels like he has to now go to this funeral because I think he sees Andor as an extremely important part of the rebellion, right? I think you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like that whole coded thing. And they were like going, no, your ass better be coming back here. I no, like the way they were doing that too. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, we need this new, this, this new piece for the shop or whatever. And no, this, that, the, like the way they kept it up the whole time was cool. Yeah. And you're starting to see a little bit of now that they're having a taste of success, they're not, the rebellion isn't backing off at all. If anything, it makes them want it more. And they're hitting a little bit of obstacles. Luthen getting hit by the track. I mean, Mon Mothma, she was like, she was shook, man. Our yeah. girl Mon was shook. And you haven't seen that from her this whole time. Even when she, you can tell she's a little nervous. She was like, this stuff might be falling apart. This money is out there. It's hanging out there. And I don't know how the hell it's all going to break. But it's going to be fucking fun, man. Next week, the funeral. This was, the, I've, I've enjoyed this show the entire way. This was the first week where I was like, let's go. As soon as I got up, I was I threw it on and was like ready to rock. And I told these goddamn kids, get the hell out of here. Daddy's watching the Star Wars. <laughs> this is this is Daddy's Star Wars show. This isn't your Star Wars show. <laughs> I love it. I love this whole show. It showed us the the truly tragic life of Cassie and Andor, but it's made him one of my favorite characters. Like very quickly in eleven episodes, I would say Cassie and I think we did the uh the long take draft of like our favorite non-force oh, yeah. user characters and i drafted cassie and saying Damn. this is the future's bet like I'm, I'm hoping that this show really lifts him up and i feel so great drafting him and and cashing in on that future yeah bet. i think you've i think you've already cashed in i think uh, this i'm gonna say this statement right now without thinking of all the people in it. i think i like him more than any of the characters in the sequel trilogy uh oh, wow well i'm just thinking of the side characters first bb8 I don't, yeah, BB-8 was kind of, he hit, he started hot, and then he kind of just, like, faded to the background. Um, like, Ray and Kylo each have their, but they like, their characters are just so motherfucked by everyone, you know, by, like, all the the rewrites or whatever you want to call it. So, I think, and I think Andor is my guy more than anyone in the sequel trilogy. Again, if there's, like, a character that's on scene for two seconds, like Tubes, I might have loved more. I have to go back and, you know, uh, fact check this this take. what about what about um babu frick nah i wasn't a guy <laughs> babu guy like you were but the the uh sicilian nuns that we liked a lot oh, yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they yeah. were up there too um but man andor good call by bob fox that was a great futures bet right there plus 500 for the funeral next week alive is plus 500 right yeah yeah okay so i and like that hashtag luth him luth him what was more impressive that uh escape from the empire or the speech at the end of uh, episode 10 to Lonnie. More impressive, maybe the Empire thing. What I liked more, the speech. The yeah. speech was like... And, and I loved the the escape from the Empire. The fucking lightsaber thing, the twist, the, him shooting. Amazing. The speech is like an all-time Star Wars scene. The, the video that you sent me to, where they put it up against like shots of the Rebellion and what came after that. 
so fucking good. I wanted to tweet that out. And I couldn't find a uh, video of it, and I was going to rip it and then tweet it and whatever and give uh, like credit to the YouTube page, and I was like, that was just too much work at the time. And for anyone that wants to see it, uh, just go to the Barstool Sports page. Uh, just search Andor, and I blogged episode 10. I think I was like, this last episode is one of the greatest pieces of Star Wars content ever, and they do – uh, Luthan speech, but they put all the different rebellion moments from over the years, from going back to the original trilogy. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. It was fucking awesome. It was so well done. So uh, I think the speech is the answer, but this was like the coolest Star Wars moment yeah. of the series so far. Which, yeah. That felt like Star Wars. That felt like we could totally. be going into, into an asteroid field coming up. And, and we see TIE street. fighters. We see stormtroopers sitting on the bridge, like yeah. standing guard or whatever. That felt so, yeah. Like almost like in Mando when he gets pulled over and stuff. Like we've had a couple of those scenes. It's always great when he's going back and forth with them. And it's like, do they know? Do they know? He's going to take off. He's going to take <laughs> off. Like it's one of those scenes again. It's yep. great. Yep. Another great episode. Thank you for tuning in. And we will be back next week for the finale edition Ooh. of Andor. It's a, it's a shame to see this show go, but I can't wait to see the finale. Drop in the comments. Like, give us one take of what's going to happen in the episode, whether Marva is a human bomb, whether Marva is alive. It doesn't even have to be Marva related. Because, again, <laughs> I think we've covered most of our bases there. But just give us one thing in the comments. By the way, I have to tell you this. Age, just because he's right here. Uh, AJ watches a bunch of YouTube stuff and in the beginning of the videos, they always, oh, something we should do. They're like, if you're like, if you want some good luck or they're like, if you want us to, he watches, it's almost like a show with cars and stuff. They drive around. It's, I think farming simulator is what they play, but they do like almost Grand Theft Auto missions, but they're G rated basically. Right. And he's like, if you want us to win today, give us a thumbs up. And they want people to hit thumbs up on the video, right, for the algorithm. AJ doesn't know what that means. So he just gives a thumbs up <laughs> as he's watching the video. It's one of the cutest things I've ever seen. So give us a thumbs up in this video. Comment and get the, get us up in the algorithm here. Um, and keep the basement. Yeah, now we're just going to ask for pictures of people like this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> watching the episode. <laughs> Tweet us a picture and hit put that hashtag Luthim. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week.